took me down for almost two weeks, but I'm feeling much better this morning. So thank you for your prayers. I really, really appreciate them and, and have felt them, and so thank you. I want to talk this morning. <clears throat> um, many of you um, have heard, I'm sure, about the revival that has been happening at As Asbury University uh, in Kentucky, and it's been phenomenal uh, what the Lord uh, has been doing. And so I want to uh, make some comments about that, make some comments about revival and what I see, <clears throat> what I see as a pastor, what God is doing right now in our midst, because it's very important for us as believers to be aligned with what God is doing. How many want to be aligned with what God is doing? Amen. Amen. On the same page as the Holy Spirit. And so I want to talk to you uh, about that this morning. So I want to talk about times of refreshing from the Lord. Everybody say it with me. Times, times of, refreshing of refreshing from the Lord. From the Lord. I'm going to be very honest with you this morning that um, over the last number of months as a pastor and a preacher, at times my heart has been discouraged at the mess with a capital M that our country has been in. And I've thought of different topics to preach on, different um, subjects to address, uh, from morality to defining marriage to um, all different kind of aspects of what we're living in in this time in our culture. But I have felt many times exhausted to even almost like, where do you start? There's so much confusion. There's so much hate. There's so much problems. And it's like, this thing is so huge, I don't know where to begin. I don't know. And obviously, there's truth, and we stand on the truth of God's word, and that's never been in question. But how do we address a world that is so confused? How do we really, uh, as a church, and, and many churches confused, and, and just a, a mess that we find ourselves in? And to be honest with you, a couple weeks ago, um, and I think it was even last week, um, I was watching TV, which I don't watch a ton of anything on television anymore, um, but I was watching um, what everybody else was, the Super Bowl. Um, and at the halftime show, um, I, to be honest with you, I was just disgusted. And my disgust is not against humanity because humanity has fallen. But just disgusted at what we would allow in our country that just seems beyond the pale. Like, what, what are people thinking? What's going on? And it gets to the point where you almost get numb, where you can't even recognize the depths of debauchery, if you will, that exist in our, in our time. And we're living, no doubt, in a time where they call uh, evil good and good evil. Uh, and it's tipped upside down. And then uh, we, Angel and I, and, and I, we were watching the Grammys, and we don't watch a lot of times this stuff just because it's a waste of time. But it's like, almost like the Holy Spirit, believe it or not, I was watching and I saw that debauchery uh, that happened towards the end. And, and I was like, I'm just going to shut this off. And I said, well, you know what? I want, I want to see, I want to see where the world is at. I want to see what's going on in this world so somehow we can have an answer. And all of those things together, to be honest with you, as a pastor and a minister, I felt very much so like we're fighting a losing battle, like we're running uphill and, and can't get to the top. And the answers of how do we address this, how do we more move forward, what do we do? Because it seems like we're the odd ones out. For the first time in my lifetime, as a Christian, you seem like in the minority in this country. How many feel that way? And it's the truth, I think. In fact, the church is supposedly supposed to regress by 20% at least in the next just few years. And the number of churches that have closed over the last three years has been astounding. And so when you look at the statistics, when you look at the, the whole picture that was going on, it can be very, very depressing. But I want you to know that this is not the first time society in our culture has faced something like this. That's right. This is not the first time that there's been just a lack and a malaise when it comes to church, when it comes to 
being a Christian when it comes to the Bible and things of God. But in those times, even in the 1700s, when it seemed like there was more people that weren't going to church than that were, and that the Bible had become an out-of-date book, God sent a refreshing. God did something that was beyond what anybody else could do. And I believe with all my heart, we are living in that kind of exact time. We are living right now in a time of refreshing that has broke out on the campus of Asbury, and I am so excited about what God is doing. You see, judgment isn't the answer. Screaming at other people isn't the answer. Being mean-spirited isn't the answer. Jesus is the answer. Come on, somebody. Jesus is the answer. If ever we needed God to move in an unexplainable way, we need him to move now. If there ever was a time we needed a God to show up and show off, it is now. Somebody said amen. Amen. To grab the attention of the watching world. I remember years ago when my daughter Mackenzie was just a small infant. She was just a few years old probably. And Angel and I were driving uh, up to Hudson and we did some business in Hudson. And I don't know if we went out to eat or what we did. But we were driving back, and on our way up to Hudson, I was listening to the radio, and it said, severe thunderstorm warnings for uh, Pierce County, Wisconsin, St. Croix County. And you know, I'm like all of you. I thought, oh, I'll be all right. It's no big deal. (laughs) And on the way back from Hudson, we were getting on the north side of Rural Falls, and the sky looked green. And it looked really bad. And out of nowhere, a storm came and about blew us off the road. And so I parked right where they cut into the hill for the bypass that they did many years ago around um, uh, River Falls. And, and we felt safe in there. But for whatever reason, I got to thinking this isn't a safe place either. And our car was just rocking back and forth. And so I pulled out of there. And that was the worst thing I could have ever done. And I pulled out of there. And finally, uh, we went downtown River Falls Uh, through the college area and trees. I was going around down power lines and through trees and wound up at the police station uh, for a safe place. But I don't know if you've ever been in a storm like that. And as a kid, I I went through a tornado one time uh, in the early 80s in my hometown of of Park Falls, Wisconsin. I think it was 1982. And the destruction and devastation that that tornado did and that we saw was absolutely unbelievable. But what I've seen, and there's moments... When you encounter a force that is beyond anything you've ever experienced, that you're like, wow, that is really large. And it shakes you to your foundation because you sense the immense power that is involved with the storm of like that I had been through, that my wife and I had been through with Mackenzie. It really shakes you up. And so now, whenever I hear a severe thunderstorm warning, I pay attention to what's going on. It kind of wrecked me to be uh, uh, oblivious to, hey, I need to take, be, be attentive to what's going on. I said that to say, I believe the answer as a pastor and minister in this generation, in this time and in this culture, is we need something greater. We need the power of God to manifest in a way that shakes us up and gets our attention that, that changes our ideas, that changes our lifestyles, that, that nothing else will do, that only the power of God can do. Amen. Amen. The awe of God. Everybody say the awe, the awe of God. Something that makes your heart stand in awe, and that's where the word, we use it so frequently and so easy today, awesome where you stand back and say, that is God, and only God could do that. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19 talks about a refreshing that comes from the Lord. And it says, now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. For when the time, verse 20 says, for the times when refreshing will come from the Spirit of God. When the time of refreshing 
will come from the presence of God. What I think happened over the last 10 days in our country of the debauchery and the offer that Satan and fallen forces and the agenda, and trust me on this, there is a diabolical agenda for our nation, for young people that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. That wants to destroy lives. And you don't have to be in the know, so to speak, or a rocket scientist to sense that. That the evilness and the debauchery and the levels of sin and the way that they've been paraded out and made to offer as a commercial or an advertisement to our young people is like nothing I've ever seen. It's reached new levels. And I believe and I sense that the revival that is coming and that is gripping churches. And listen, it starts with the church. Amen. Amen. You want to know where revival starts, as I've heard? Draw a circle that only you can fit in. And in that circle is where revival starts. It starts with me, and it starts with you. Amen. But nonetheless, it's as if we're in a time, and this is where my heart and but the Holy Spirit spoke to me. It's like when the prophets of Baal uh, and, the, and the prophet Elijah was deciding which way they were going to go and basically threw on a commercial. And Elijah said, well, if you're right and if your way is the way to go, then we'll do this sacrifice and fire will fall from heaven. But if it doesn't fall and then I put a, put, put a sacrifice for, forth and if fire falls, then this is the way. And I believe we have seen in living color a commercial that hell has put on in front of our whole nation of demonism and satanic garbage. And right now, God is showing through the church in America, through churches who are willing to seek after God, God is showing his way. God is showing a better way. God is showing a righteous way. God is showing a way of life and righteousness. That's why I believe it's happening. And I also believe that God has got to get our attention. That we have got to hear from the Lord. Somebody said amen. amen. We have to hear from the Spirit of God. We have to hear from the Word of the Lord. I'm talking really hearing. Because when you really hear, it changes you. When I really hear, it changes me. That's why, you know, Moses at one time asked if he could see God. And God said, let's not worry about that. Because there's something greater than seeing, and that's hearing. You can be seen and not heard, but when you hear or when you've been heard, it changes everything. And oh, for us to hear from God, to hear from heaven. Somebody said amen. amen. So, I want to talk about the church just for a moment. So I've talked about the world and where it's at, what I sense God is doing, what we can lean into and what we can expect in faith. But in many sectors, the church has got off in, in, in the weeds in many ways, unfortunately. And this is really a course correction. You know what I think is outstanding about the revival that's happened in Asbury and spreading? There's no big name preachers doing it. Come on. There's no personality attached with it except the personality of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise God. I fear the church in modern times has become a place of money changing. And I think it pains the heart of God because there's something more real than that. There's something more real than peddling the gospel for money and name and fame. Somebody said amen. Amen. I think it's awesome that it's not the latest singing group that's traveling around on the radio and making a big name for themselves in Christian circles and raking in a lot of money that's been leading the prayer and praise and worship, but it's nobody's who nobody even knows. Amen. I like that. 
I said, I like that. First Corinthians chapter one. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. Listen to me closely, child of God. The kingdom of God and his cross is never going to make sense to the world. Quit trying to explain it to them. The only way they're going to understand is if they have a revelation by the Holy Spirit. It makes no sense that you're here this morning. It makes no sense that you're lifting hands and worshiping God. It is unintelligible. It is something of the spirit. It is beyond intellect. Somebody said amen. Amen. As the scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the, uh, the intelligence of the intelligent. Verse 20. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom. Hallelujah. He has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. Praise God. Make sure you go to a church where there's foolish preaching. Amen. Make sure you go to a church where the powers, a power of God is allowed to move. Amen. Where we leave this place not just intellectually stimulated, but our hearts burn within us. And it changes our lives and changes our attitude and changes our mind. Somebody said amen. amen. Praise God. It is foolish to the Jew who asks for signs from heaven, and it is foolish to the Greek who seek human wisdom. Did you know that many of the revivals that have come through America and around the world have been preachers without an education who spoke bad English and could barely string sentences together? I want you to know that it's not eloquence that God is looking for. It's not wisdom of this world, and it's not professionalism. That way, man gets in the way. But we want the raw power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended, and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. It's good when people are offended and people say it's all nonsense because God moves an environment where he does the work. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentile, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans. And God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all. The King James Version says, counted as dung. Count it as nothing at all and use them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. Now here's, here's, here's your clue. Here's our cue. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Brothers and sisters, that's a modern day revival that is happening in our country that one denomination can't claim, one preacher can't claim, one church can't claim, one musician can't claim. When God moves, all glory goes to God. 
when truly we hear from heaven, the one who is uplifted and the one who gets credit is Jesus Christ. I fear we've made too many idols out of our structure. We've made too many idols out of personality. We've made too many idols out of do it this way or do it that way. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. But can we see Jesus? Can we have a touch of heaven in our lives? Somebody said amen. Amen. So what is God calling the church to? What is God calling you to? What is he calling me to in this time? A mighty move of God has always happened with this first element, and that is of repentance. Of repentance. David said, search me, O God, and know my heart, and See if there be any wicked way in me. God moves when we get serious about having a repentant, clean heart. God will not move when the proud. God will not move with people say, oh, I guess I'm all right. There's not one person in this church, including the guy standing up front, that does not need to fall to our knees occasionally and say, God, search me and see if there be any wicked way in me. Lord, I want to make sure that I'm on the right path. I want to make sure that my heart is right. I want to make sure that my relationships are right. I don't want to be a gossip. <laughs> I don't want to be talking about people. I, I, I fear for so many Christians that when I hear and I see things where they're supposedly supposed to be walking with Jesus, yet they'll talk about someone or, or be crossways with people and, and somehow think they're a, a newborn believer. It's not so. It's not the way it should be. But the only way that we can get to our hard hearts, somebody say hard hearts. hearts. Or should I say our hard heads? How many know we're (laughs) thick skulled? Amen. And we think we can be crossways and tell people off and have animosity and, and stuff in our heart and in our life and think, well, I'm okay. Well, that's not what the word of God endorses and that's not what Jesus taught. The Bible said that he will, the world will know that we are his disciples if, turn to your neighbor and say if, yeah. come on, say it with me, if yeah. we have love one towards another. And that is the miracle of the cross. That is the miracle of Jesus where you can like that person sitting next to you, whether you're married to them or not. Look on down the road. Stick your neck out. Look at all those people. <laughs> Loving them like Jesus loved them and not being crossway, not thinking you're better than or have an opinion about or what have you. No, we are repentive of that and we're not so easily offended and we're not so... You know what's, you know what's had a devastating effect on the church? You ready for this? Commercialism and consumerism. Well, if that preacher would just preach a little better, I'd show up. Well, if they wouldn't sing so many songs, I'd show up. Well, if they would sing my style of music, I would show up. And I can come up with about 100 things I've heard over the, word, over the years of what people use as excuses because they look at the church as something that's supposed to make them happy. Brothers and sisters, that's not what the church is about. The church is about me leaning in. The church is about me being a part and praying and connecting with other believers. It's not something that we sit back and criticize. It's the body of Christ. Somebody said amen. And so... When we get aligned with the Lord, when we get aligned, our hearts are softened. And it doesn't matter what song we sing. It doesn't matter how fast it is or how slow it is. It doesn't matter how hot it is in church or how cool it is. It doesn't matter what kind of chairs we sit on. None of that matters. We're so in love with Jesus. We just want to be with the people of God. Somebody said amen. 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 But the church has, has leaned into this and we want to make everybody happy. And, and I know that we need to do things in excellence and we want to 
make a comfortable environment, but I want you to know, when the Spirit of God truly moves, we get beyond ourselves. Somebody said amen. We get beyond ourselves and, and we'll go out of our way. We will reach out. We will do something that our flesh wouldn't do before we really had a touch of God. We would go beyond that because now our hearts are changed and our attitudes are changed and we live in a state of repentance. Second Chronicles chapter 7 in verse 14. I referenced this last week. Everybody say, then if. Then if. Then if. My people, not the world, then if, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. He's saying, these are my people, but I need them to humble themselves. You don't have to feel bad about needing to be humbled. We need it. If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. How many want to see our land restored? <laughs> Repentance is a component of what Jesus is doing. I would pray that this week you'd be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is speaking into your life and to take action on what he calls to your attention. As God is moving in a renewed way in our churches and in our country, let's be honest about our hearts and let's be honest about repentance and hearing the voice of God and, and acting and obeying on what the Holy Spirit is speaking to the church, to our church. A second dimension of revival that is happening and that is an open door for us as Christians in this time. The answer for us, the response to all the hell, the response to the debauchery, the, the, the response to all the evil is for us to repent. It's for us to be humble. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 is that awesome verse where Paul said, let this attitude be in you that was in Christ. Although he was God, he humbled himself. We live in such a proud environment. Nobody telling me what to do. Nobody going to tell me how to do it. Look at me. You know, I got it figured out. I'm going to take it to the next level and you're going to take a back seat to me and and I got the way, and nobody's going to tell me other. Opposite of the attitude of a Christian moved on by the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit moves upon us and we're open, it brings us to our knees, and we see our own wretched self, and we see how much we need Jesus, and it moves us to a place of, of deep humility. Of deep humility. So repentance and humility... I thought it was, I was so moved to see all these college kids crying and reaching out to the Lord and jumping, jumping under the power of the Holy Spirit, jumping up and down in celebration of the joy that Jesus gives. Amen. And in the back of the, the front of the auditorium there at the university where this revival has broke out at Asbury, it's very old and there's carving in the wood up in the, in the front of the building there where everyone look. Where there's been a number of revivals that have broken out over the last hundred years. And it says, holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. Some of you may know church history and some of you may not know church history. But in the middle 1800s, around the time of the Civil War and thereafter, there was a movement that started and actually this place in Kentucky is where one of these great renewals or refreshing happened. 
in the mid to late 1800s when it seemed like people were far from God and it was a terrible time for the church in America. And revival broke out and people were tired of Christian in name only, which meant, yeah, you were X denomination, but you lived just like the world. There was no difference in your lifestyle. There was no power in your life. The main line, main line denominations had become so dead, no spirit movement. And that's where the Methodist preachers and actually Reverend Osbury, who this campus is named after, started preaching and revival broke out. And revival is always something where we break off sinful habits and things of the flesh, and our lives become more like Jesus. Our lives become more like Jesus. Because we have these promises, Second Corinthians says, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. Now, there's something in the Christian's heart that should grieve when we see the awful sin that a lot of people in this world are involved in in these times. There's something that should grieve where we become prayerful where we become concerned, not judgmental, not self-righteous. Someone told me this morning that they have such compassion when they see people who are unsaved. And it grieved their heart. I said, that's exactly the way Jesus felt when he looked at Jerusalem and he's seen all these people not having a relationship with God. It's for the famous scripture where he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I would that I could be like a mother hen and gather you in, but you would not hear. Holiness, where the spirit of God moves so deeply and so strongly that it changes our very lifestyle, that it changes our conduct, that we stop the things that lead to fleshly living, that we stop the activity that would lead us down the wrong road, not out of rules and regulations and you know hardcore religion, but because we've had a change of heart, yeah. but because the inside of our heart is grieved by the sin that is around us. That's holiness under the Lord. It's not an old fashioned word. It is a word that needs to describe, come on, our lives as we have an encounter with the cross of Jesus. And God changes our life. Let us not be cheap grace Christians where we accept salvation, but then there's no change in our lifestyle. And we go on like we always had, just thinking we're saved, but we're really delusional because there's no, been no change in our lifestyle. Amen. And that change happens not because of sheer will or determination, but that happens by the Holy Spirit being poured in our heart where God gives us his will and God gives us his way and plants them deep into our hearts. Somebody said amen. amen. And how sad is a day has it been come in America and this is why we're seeing revival and we need revival is because many churches are now calling evil good and good evil. The very place where we need to hear the truth is gone silent. The very place where the oracles of God's word needs to be preached and need to be taught is not taught anymore. The opposite is taught. Oh, how we need heaven to break through. Oh, how we need Jesus to show us the way. Somebody said amen. So repentance, humility, holiness, and generosity. Everybody say generosity. Acts chapter 2, this is the first church, the first authentic revival that happened described in the Bible. 
And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. And I've taught upon this before. This is not a Bible doctrine. It was just, it's written to show some of the attributes of what happens when God fills us. We become very generous with how God has blessed us. We start looking out for those in need around us. It's not a selfish living, but God breaks through that and we become very generous. We become, the Bible talks about us being hospitable or being open to those around us and blessing those around us that God puts in our pathway. So repentance, humility, holiness, generosity. And lastly, fellowship. Everybody say fellowship. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we're seeing a season of revival at C3 Church. The church that Jesus builds, it's not just something you come in on a Sunday morning and check in and check out. But there's fellowship. I don't know if you've seen it, some of the video footage coming out of Asbury, but you see a lot of people embracing one another. You see a lot of kindness. You see a lot of camaraderie. You see a lot of care and goodwill. You see, that's what the Holy Spirit does inside of us. It's been said for years about C3 Church that it's such a friendly church and, and people are open. Why is that? That's not a culture that we do. I could not stay up here and say, uh, as you stand with me this morning, I could not stand up here and say, church, let's be more friendly. Come on, would you, would you just be more friendly? That's just, that's just outside, inside. Okay, I better write this down too. Pastor Matt wants us to be friendly. That's religion. That's just mechanical. But oh, brothers and sisters, when you've tasted of the Holy Spirit, it's like we've all consumed wine and we're all feeling it. But it's greater than any substance you can consume here created on the earth. It's the substance that comes from heaven in the personhood of the Holy Spirit that gives us great love and great joy and great friendliness. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Fellowship was a characteristic of the first church. Why? Because it was on their mission statement? Well, they didn't have mission statements. <laughs> because it was some culture they were trying to create? No. It was an outpouring of what had been poured in their hearts. It was something that happened here that became an outer effect of their relationships. So revival, when God moves, it starts with us calling, being called to repentance because we sense our need of God. It's a calling to humble ourselves. If you're crossways with somebody or something's going on in your life, you're, really to, you're willing to repent. You're willing to let go. You're willing to let God take over in every area of your life. Come on, somebody. You're willing to say, you know what? I'm gonna become more like Jesus and he's gonna give me the power on the inside. I'm gonna become a holy person, not be out of sheer will, but God's changing my heart and God is changing my mind because of a force that came from heaven in my life and it's greater than anything else I have ever experienced. Somebody said amen. Praise God. Amen. Why do we come to this church? Not because of the great preaching, but because of the great God that is preached about. Praise God. Why do we come to this church? Not because of the great songs, but because of the Holy Spirit that manifests himself when we lift our hands and we praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what we sing. If it's offered to the Lord and it's God-honoring lyrics, the Holy Spirit comes and Jesus does a work in our hearts and that's the difference. Somebody said amen. 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 Holiness under the Lord. And then a generosity that comes and fellowship one with the other. Praise God. If you have a hard time fellowshipping, seek God about it. 
God wants to do a new work in your life. Where you become, you know, a member of the household of faith. Member, membership in the body of Christ, in the church of Jesus Christ, wasn't this formal thing, if you will. And I know for housekeeping, and we talk about, you know, why we have membership at C3 Church so that we're accountable and we're numbered so we know who belongs and we can care for one another. It's, it's, it's a logistic issue. And it's important. But make no mistake about it. Before you ever become a member of the church, you got to become a member of the body of Christ. Before you ever become a member, your heart has got to change citizenship from this world to heaven. Otherwise, it's just a system of man. Let's not get the cart before the horse. But when that fellowship comes, when that fellowship in the Holy Spirit, that fellowship with the Word of God, it's something so otherworldly. It's something that changes our hearts. It's not me. It's not the church building. But it's something that the Holy Spirit does in my heart. Where I become planted. I become part of the fellowship. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 says, all the believers devoted, everybody say devoted, devoted. themselves to the apostles' teaching, the word of God. Everybody say the word of God. Word of God. Amen. Having another shall pass away, but his world will never pass away. We're grounded and founded on this, brothers and sisters. This is it. Voted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. Part of the reason you might be struggling is you're not connected in fellowship like God's desire is for you. I would pray the Holy Spirit would speak to you, do a work in your heart where you would see your need for uplifting fellowship. Fellowship is one of the aspects of a true reviving. Our world is saying there's people in this world who are sick of the games, who are sick of the commercials that hell is trying to sell them on, who've been caught up in all kinds of garbage. And it's like this verse in John 12, 21. 12 and 21, it says, I paid a visit to Philip from Bethsaida in Galilee. They said, sir, we want to meet Jesus. Jesus is more than a doctrine. Jesus is more than a name. Jesus is more than the name of a church. Jesus is our Savior. And people around you and people around me are saying, hey, Pastor Matt, we'd like to meet Jesus. And church, you and I have got to be in the shape yes. where we're in the position through our own hearts being in the right place where the world can see Jesus through us. John, the forerunner of Jesus, who Jesus said about him, there's been none that's been greater than John, said this. He must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. How many are ready for God to do whatever God wants to do? Amen. Amen. I want to give an altar call this morning.
And I want to simply say, maybe God is speaking to you about a fresh commitment from your heart. It says, I, I, I want to be in that spot that Jesus wants me to be in, and I don't want anything in this world to come between me and where God wants me. And I truly want to be a light to my world. And so I'm going to ask you to just step out of where you're standing there. If this is personally something that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now, and you sense it deep within your person, I want you to come, and I want you to stand right here, and we're going to pray together. I believe there's people in church this morning and you've never walked the aisle and you've wanted to. You know, people say, Pastor Matt, why do you give an altar call? You know, there's not necessarily you have to give an altar call, but there's something special. You know, Jesus hung naked on the cross for you and for me. And I'm tired of this where we're too embarrassed to take a stand or step out or whatever because somehow we don't want to be embarrassed. Maybe we need to get over ourselves. Maybe our flesh needs to die. And I think in coming forward, it's one way you say, yep, I'm that person. I want my flesh to die and I want to be numbered with Jesus. And so I say that to you in bold this this morning. Maybe you've never walked the aisle and consecrated and you're giving your heart to Jesus. And this morning the Holy Spirit is burning so strong on you and there's a demon on this shoulder and the Holy Spirit on this shoulder. Which one are you going to listen to? Who are you going to hear? Who are you going to be, let be the greatest influence in your life? And so if you've never poured your heart out to God and drawn a line in the sand and said, you know what? From this day forward... My life is in Jesus' hands. I want to receive his love, his redemption, his forgiveness. I want to receive Jesus in a new and living way over my life and over my family. I'm calling to you this morning. Will you walk the aisle? Will you walk down to the front of this church and say, I'm, I'm being serious this morning with God. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your precious word, Lord. Lord, thank you for the gift of salvation. Lord, and I know that many people in this building this morning have felt like me, exhausted, and how much more can we handle, and God, what's next, and what is your plan, and so all the confusing things of this time. But as we stand in your holy presence this morning, Jesus, We know <laughs> that you're never out. We know that we need power from heaven. Something like a storm that we can feel the power so strong. It's like, wow, I don't, that is way above me. God, help us as a church to lock into that truth that it's not by might nor by power, which speaks of us doing it, but it's by the Holy Spirit. God, help us to sense the miracles and the salvations and what you want to do in our communities, Lord, does not come from our slick little programs or does not come from us doing it how we want to do it, God, but comes from an openness, Lord, whatever you desire, Lord, whatever you want with my life, God, whoever you want to do it on your timeline and your way, but Holy Spirit, I am open to you and we are open to you. Let heaven come down and minister and change and touch us touch our families and touch our lives, God, 
And only ways that you can, Lord. That is our heart's cry. That is our heart's prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, we call out to you right now, Lord. All across this building. Come on, would somebody lift their hand all across the building this morning and say, Lord, here I am right now. Lord, here's my heart, Lord. Here's my family, Lord. Here's my marriage. Here's my life, God. Here's my children, God. Here is everything I am, God. And I stand before you this morning. And Lord, I seek your touch, Lord. I seek your presence, God. I seek after you, Holy Spirit. Lord, more than anything, I want you. More than anything, I want your touch in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Lord God, continue to let your spirit fall on our churches, Lord. Continue to let God Lord, our lives be changed, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, do a work that only you can do, Jesus. Lord, we pray for the people around us that we're waiting and wanting to see a miracle of salvation in God. Lord, and unless you do it, Lord, there's nothing we can do, God. We've tried, we've, we've talked, we've tried to convince, but Holy Spirit, unless you change hearts, it doesn't happen. Lord, that's the power we're asking for. Lord, that's the dynamic we're asking for, Lord. Oh, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Could you grab the hand of your neighbor? Would you do that, Father, in the name of Jesus? God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. God, I thank you for the fresh work that you're doing. God, we don't want to make it up or, God, just make it real, Lord. Lord Jesus, that as we journey in faith this week, God, that you'd call us, that you'd call us, Lord, to a place, God, that is effective in reaching others for you, Lord, that's effective in serving you in these times. God, we believe the breakthrough is coming, God. We see it. We see it, Lord. God, it's not going to be a combative, but it's going to be a better answer. Lord, it's going to be, Lord, light shining. Lord, just a small speck of light is greater than the greatest darkness, God, and that's what you're doing right now. You are going to show up, and you're going to show your grace mightily. God, you're going to show your favor mightily, Lord. You're going to show your presence mightily, Lord, over people's families, Lord, over people's lives. 
Oh, Lord, let it come now, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for one another in these times, God. Give us an awakeness. Give us an awareness, Lord God, to what you're up to and what you're doing, Lord. God, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, could you just lift your hands all over the building as a sign of fresh surrender? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your touch. Thank you for a sense of heaven, Lord. God, filling us this morning, Lord. God, as we leave this place, Lord, we take your spirit with us, Lord, to go out into the world, God, and to be the light of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Continue to get our attention, God. Continue to speak to us. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, church. God bless you, C3 family. Amen. God bless your week. Go in Jesus. Amen. God bless you.